Section 4.2 RA4. A pediatrician wants to determine the relation that exists between a child's height X and a head circumference Y. She randomly selects 11 children from her practice, measures their heights and head circumferences, and obtains the accompanying data. We're going to complete parts A through E. So here we can see what the data represents. We have height, which is the first column, which is the variable X in inches, and then our second column is the head circumference, which is the variable Y, which is also in inches. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to be able to find the least squares regression line treating height as the explanatory variable, which is X, and the head circumference, which is Y, as the response variable. Now this is the regression line. We have Y, which is equal to B1X plus B0. What we want to do is we want to be able to figure out what is B1 and B0. So since we have a lot of data here, we can use this by using StatCrunch. So let's go ahead and open up the problem here. So here is the particular problem. Okay, you can click on the icon to get the data table that you just had seen here. So this is the data table. We're going to head and open this up in StatCrunch. Okay, so now that we have this open up, what we want to do is we want to be able to go to stat. Now, if we look at the column, we already have our height, x, our height circumferences, and y. So once we select stat, we're going to scroll down to where it says regression, and then we're going to select simple linear. Okay, now in the x variable, we already know what it is because it's going to tell us here that height is in x inches. The y variable is going to be the head circumference. Okay, and then all we need to do now is go all the way to the bottom at this point, and the only thing we need to do is just select compute. Now, when we select compute, okay, what's going to happen is, is that it's going to give us some data up here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this data so we can analyze this a little bit better. Okay, so what does this tell us? Okay, now we're going to look at the data here, and the data tells us how we can determine what B1 represents and what B0 represents. So remember that B1 is going to be the coefficient of X, okay? And so the coefficient of X here is this number here, because it says here that Y is equal to 13.960501 plus Point zero, excuse me, 0 0.12736031 for the height, that's in X inches. So we know that B1 is going to be this number, which is 0 0.12736031. And then B0 is going to be this number, which is the y-intercept, which is 13.960501. So now that we have that data, now we can plug it into the equation. So if we round this to four decimal places, we're going to have y, which is equal to 0.1274x, plus the y-intercept rounded to four decimal places, which is 13.9605. Okay, now next, now that we have the regression line, we can answer question B. It says, use the regression equation to predict the head circumference of a child who is 25 inches tall. So we're going to use the equation of the least squares regression line, which we found here in part A, to be y which is equal to 0.1274x plus 13.9605 to find the predicted value of y. So the predicted value okay, of the head circumference of a child who is 25 inches tall, that means that x is going to be 25, so we're going to plug x in to be 25 into the equation. We're going to take 0.1274 multiply it by 25, and then add 13.9605, and we get y to be approximately 17.15 inches. Next, in part C, we want to be able to compute the residual based on the observed head circumference of the 25-inch tall child in the table. 
is the, is the head circumference of this child above average or below average? Okay, so the residual is given by the formula below. The residual is equal to the observed y minus the predicted y. So let's go ahead and determine that. So here, what I did is I copied the table from the beginning. And so we were looking at the 25 inch tall child table, right? So here, when we look at the 25 inch, this number 25, what is the value for y? Well, the value for y is 16.9. So then the observed y is 16.9, okay? And then we're gonna take the predicted value of y, which we found in the previous exercise in part B, which is 17.15. So when we subtract those two numbers, then we get negative 0.25 inches. And so since the value of the residual is negative, the head circumference of this child is below average. Part D, it says draw the least squares regression line on the scatter diagram of the data and label the residual from part C. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the least squares regression line y is equal to 0.1274x plus 13.9605 on the scatter diagram of the data and then label the residual negative 0.25 from part C. So we've already done this on StatCrunch. So let's go ahead and open up StatCrunch, okay? And if you go over here and then select to the right, you're gonna see the actual line, which is the regression line, that's been graphed here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that into our page here. So now let's take a look at what we see here. So we found from our equation in the first part at this point on the line on our graph was 25 and then we got 17.5 for the y value. Okay, and then down here, this point on the table was 25 and then we know that the y value was 16.9. So if we take a look at the residual, the residual is the difference between those two numbers. So the residual was negative 0 0.25. And therefore you can see how it's noted here on this part here. Okay, now in part E it says, notice that the two children are 26 inches tall. One has a head circumference of 17.2 inches. The other has a head circumference of 17.3 inches. How can this be? Well, note that the observed value and the predicted value may vary. So for children who are 26 inches tall, head circumference varies as well. 